can put my hat on. Yeah. yeah. My you, can't, party hat. you can't give a good presentation without that Definitely. hat. <laughs> so this is uh, the Grim of Dead. Um, I, I was, a, I guess it, you'd call him a deadhead these days, but back in the early 70s, when I would, was in high school, we would go across. And this is my favorite album. This is uh, Bertha, some people call it. And so I was doing a series of three different, um, three different album covers uh, a couple years ago. And so this one here is The Clash. And then my son asked me for Sublime. And I didn't know who Sublime was. And it turns out it's this band. And they had this really interesting cover that, uh, for their album. And actually, that's probably the best piece here. But he won't give it to me. He took it over to his house, and he won't give it back. <laughs> but this is uh, where I, I start here with a panel uh, of a wood called basswood, which is kind of soft. Uh, and, and, and it doesn't have much grain to fight the chisels and stuff. And I used a little bit of a router just to take away the background, but all the, the lettering and everything is carved with hand tools. And, uh, and then I use a lot of, I like these toy dies because you can see the grain of the wood through the die, and yet they have a bright color, and I like color a lot. And so, um, now on the interior here, it was sort of, on the album, it's white with some black specks. And so, uh, I like, I'm trying to learn how to use um, leaf. You know, uh, so this is gold leaf, and this is silver leaf. And I didn't, I don't do, it's really hard to work with. It's a whole different thing. And, uh, but I, but it was fun, and I put that, that in. And it gave me, it gave me these missing pieces, which makes it, reminds me more of, of the original um, uh, uh, album cover. Um, this piece here is, is a, uh, uh, it's dusty. I've got to dust it. <laughs> this was been in my living room for a long time. I carved this probably you know, 10 or 15 years ago. And what I wanted to do, I was, I was, I love Picasso's work, and I wanted to do one of my own. So I took one of his called the Reader, and I, I just uh, made a big panel of mahogany here and uh, several pieces. And then I carved it, and then to deal with the colors, I I took uh, you know latex paints and stuff like that, and I and I would paint it on, and then I would wipe it off so that I could get down and see some of the grain of the wood that comes through it because I wanted to make sure people realized what this was that it wasn't just a painting. And then then there's a lot of controversy in my family about this about the. Uh, frame that's on here. Uh, they told me not to do it. I don't know. Maybe I'll take it off someday, but uh, it's kind of fun. I call it, I, I think of it as, as, as Picasso's Mexican period, and that's probably racist or something like that. I didn't mean it that way. But, uh, you know, when you, when, you, when you go down to Mexico, you know, they have the glow-in-the-dark paintings that you could get of, of uh, Jimi Hendrix and stuff like that. I kind of thought of that. This is sort of my big world. Oh, uh, so these are all these are all copies. I would call them. This is a uh, this is Adam from the Sistine Chapel, and I made just a couple of little variations in it. One is that I, I, you know, God is not a strong personality in my background, uh, but DNA is. And so to me, this is a little piece of DNA that's coming out and being transferred to Adam from, you can fill in the blank, I guess. Yeah. And, that's uh, an original twist from the Sistine. Yes, the it's DNA. very different. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so this is a big solid piece of mahogany. It, it carves really nicely. It has such wonderful uh, grain and tone and variation in it. And, and I like that. Uh, these are some new pieces that I've, I've carved. Uh, this, this I call Jenny Jones because I was taking a class uh, in, um, in drawing and uh, at uh, the Guadalajara Arts Center and this was the model that was there and so she let me take a picture of her and I used it to, 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 uh, to carve this and I think it 
turned out again this basswood. There's a little bit of I use some kind of blackening back here, probably a felt pen or, or who knows what ink. Probably ink. I like ink. Um, and then the hair. But other than that, it's just you know just carving. This thing here is is a mask I just carved, and I call it it's a kabuki mask. Now in kabuki, we you paint your face, so it's a face painting. And I'm presently working on a clown face, a Joker face. And I see this parallelism between the two situations. It's sort of like this is a Japanese clown, and the Joker is an American clown because the Joker paints his face to be a big smile, but he may be crying inside. You know? uh -huh. And you can yeah. see it if you actually go through the, the makeup and look at, at who he is. And it's the same here. Uh, in the Kabuki, they paint these lips on, and they make it so he's smiling, or they make it so that he's, he's crying. Uh, and no matter what the actual actor is feeling at the time, of course, the actors are very professional, and they, of course, you know, know what to do and, and, and try to. But I, I found this parallel. So, I, uh, so I, now I'm working on the Joker, which will probably take me another half a month or month to, to finish off. I started making panels like the ones we've just seen. Uh, the first one I did was a Roy Lichtenstein that he called Peace Through Chemistry. And my background is a chemist. I was a chemist uh, at the University of Georgia for 34 years or something. And, um, and so I thought, I, I should carve this, this Lichtenstein. Because I, and so I made a panel and I carved out, and it's got like a guy looking down at a, a, a microscope, and it's got the sun shining on things, and it's, it's got a guy with a test tube, and all these sorts of you know, classic chemi chemical kinds of things. Uh, so then I, I did a bunch of other stuff, and then I came back because I liked this face so much, and I thought it would be a wonderful uh, screen. It's so simple, you know, just like the bright colors and, and, and whatnot. And so, uh, so I started to carve this, and I, I gave it to my mother uh, about five, five, ten years ago. And now she's in a home, and so I, I, I repossessed it, and, uh, and I, I really, really enjoy this one. It's one of the ones I, I wanted to hang on to. Uh, but it's, it's essentially basswood again. You can see the grain, some dyes. These are yellow uh, toy dyes, and blue toy dyes. And blue is, is fading a little bit. Uh, they do that sort of thing sometimes. And then the, we have the dots. This is my homage to, to to Roy because he would he would draw, of course, pictures that resembled um, a newsprint or something or a car, uh, uh, a comic book. And he's glad he, he's famous for that sort of thing. So he was the one that, that designed this one, and I wanted to make sure it's there. Not that I'm going to see that's for sure. Well, that about does it for our interview with John. Come on out to the gallery and see these and other examples of John's work.